I'm going to call this meeting of Ohio County Physical Court to order on this 10th day of August 2021, a little after 5 p.m. I want to ask our hospital administrator, Blaine Piper, if you'll lead us in a prayer and face the flag. Our Father in Heaven, we're grateful this uh, day that we're able to meet together in this fiscal court meeting. We're thankful for these individuals who devote their time and energy to the county, to the residents, to make their lives better. And pray that I will inspire and bless them that they might do those things that will relieve the burdens of the oppressed and help uh, the people of this area do well. We're mindful of those who are suffering because of the coronavirus or other health care issues and pray that thou will bless them and uh, heal this land and help uh, heal the people. Again, we pray for thy kindness and thy generosity tonight and pray for uh, all of the people of this county. We say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Blaine. Before you have the minutes of the... Uh, July the 27th meeting, as, as well as the uh, special call meeting on August the 2nd. I have a motion to approve, motion. Second. Motion by Sam Small, second to Joe Barnes. Uh, is there any discussion, corrections, or additions? Any discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Larry. You're you're, no, no, you're good. I can move it. It says no. do not move. Yes. Yeah. I'll just leave it. <laughs> no, no, no. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, next, you uh, you have the uh, bills, claims, payments, and transfer, including the late list. So moved. Motion Larry can Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Everybody ready? Yes. Go cut. Small? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Barr? Yes. Camp? Yes. Morphew? Yes. <coughs> Motion carries. Is that Turn off the minute I said it is. I make a motion we acknowledge the treasurer's July 2021 financial statement. I'll second. Motion by uh, uh, Sam Small, second by Joe Barnes, uh, that uh, that we approve the uh, bill claims payments. I'm sorry, that we approve. Uh, acknowledge. Acknowledge the receipt of the treasurer's report for July 2021 that we received. With the uh, no, we're not approving it. It all goes to it's subject to uh, all this. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Okay. I'll make a motion to acknowledge the clerk's July 2021 financial report. I'll second. Motion by Sam Small, second by Joe Barnes to acknowledge the receipt of the clerk's July 2021 uh, report. Is there any discussion? Being none, I'll in favor say aye. Aye. Post Better like sign. Let Miranda catch up. Post Good. carries. Small got them too. Got it. You get the most, the first and yep. second on? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, next, we're going to recognize uh, from our Ohio King Hospital. Hey, Miranda. I'm going to turn this thing on. We're going to uh, recognize uh, Lane Piper and C.C. Robinson. They've got a presentation for us. Yeah. All on him tonight. Blaine well, getting up a little slow there, wasn't he? Oh, guys. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Thank you very much for allowing us. We said uh, two years ago we'd come every year and give you an update on the hospital. I know in the next, this week, in the next couple weeks, you're going to be taking some action, we hope, 
who will help the hospital in our starting of our OR project. So I wanted to come today and just update you on where we come from, what's happened the last year and a half for us, kind of where we're at, and uh, some of the changes that we're making to the project and how that might impact the county here. First, we want to express appreciation to all of you for your support, for the county support of the hospital. We've never felt more supported. Uh, during a time of uh, difficulty for a lot of hospitals, we have had a lot of support by the community, and we certainly do appreciate that very much. Back, uh, if we go back to January of 2020, we were doing pretty good as a hospital. We were, we were making a little bit of money and we were uh, getting ready and excited for the building project that we proposed. Uh, everything was, was on track to where we needed to be. And then, uh, then the, this coronavirus pandemic hit and uh, things deteriorated quickly. I've got a, a, I know this is gonna be too little for you to see, but I think you can kind of get a sense. This is our profits per month. Uh, you can tell where the pandemic hit. <laughs> you can see that uh, long about March of 2020, things went bad real fast. When the governor said we couldn't do elective surgeries, things dried up, people quit coming to the hospital, and uh, we lost about $500,000 a month uh, for those first few months of the pandemic. Uh, and then it kind of slowly improved, it came back. Uh, and you know this spring uh, things actually started looking good we've been tracking volumes coming back to normal and things uh, actually started looking good we were fortunate that we had good uh, support from the fiscal or from the elected officials the stimulus monies we got payroll protection program we were able to uh, keep everybody fully employed all 500 employees fully employed uh, we were able to get uh, that loan forgiven uh, by the federal government so we were able to do okay through this whole process and our volumes have come back. I think last week uh, we had uh, almost 10% of our, of all of our revenue producing areas were operating not just back to pre-pandemic levels but at new, uh, new levels for our organization. So we've done pretty well and I think we're getting back where we want to. Now unfortunately, we've seen a resurgence of COVID issues. Uh, in the last week we've probably treated as many people in a week as what we did in two or three months back during the pandemic earlier. We've got probably about five patients in the hospital now. We've sent a lot of patients out. Typically, if they need uh, need to be intubated, we tend to send them out. But now we can't find hospitals to accept them because everybody's full. Now, this whole region is full right now. So it's a tough time for us. Our nursing staff has been taxed pretty well. One of the good things was part of our pro building project that our first phase of the whole thing, we decided to build uh, a new ICU to start with. We were going to connect to our old ICU to the new building, and so we thought, well, let's go ahead and build it early, and let's make it a place where we can take care of, of COVID-type patients with a, in a safe environment. We didn't have any real good places to do that in our old building, and so we got approval of the state to, and USDA to go ahead and get started on that part of the project, but it took so long to get all the uh, the, the different supplies and stuff you need in a project, things just kind of dried up uh, in the last six months. And so it was just taking forever, and I thought, we're never going to get to see any COVID patients in this new unit. Well, that was not true. <laughs> we're, we're, it's full now of COVID patients, and we're able to use it effectively to help the people in our county. So we're glad we, we took that move and started on that project. It cost us about $700,000 but it's part of what we need to do to care for people in this area. So we're glad we got that, that taken care of. So as we looked at, at the project, originally it was approved by the USDA last summer, or last spring. Uh, Mitch McConnell was here in the area and he had a big announcement. USDA came in, gave us a big uh, a check and we were all excited because uh, the new project, would they were gonna fund $16 million. We're gonna have another four and a half million dollars funded through uh, a, a regional bank that uh, provides USDA additional funding. A uh, total $22 million project. We have thought oh, we're ready to go. Well, unfortunately, things changed and this pandemic was just one of a number of issues. Our architect that we originally had, he got sick, he retired, and so we had to start with a new architect firm. They came in and they re-looked at the design. We had new doctors that we had been able to recruit. We were glad for that. They wanted an input on the design, and so we redesigned 
uh, our, our OR, and it grew a little bit, additional space. We had equipment that deteriorated and that we had to add to the equipment list. Our equipment list grew. And then the pandemic, the cost of uh, goods, the materials needed in construction just went sky high. And all that added to the cost of our project. So we've had to go back to USDA and say, you know that project, yeah, 22 million. We probably, to finish it all off, we're gonna need about 27 million. The good news was, the interest rate started out at four and a half percent. It's down to just over 2% now. And we're thinking, that saves enough so that our, our payments, even at the higher level, is gonna be lower than what they would have been when we first started out. So there's been mixed blessings in this whole process. But we're now moving with USDA, where we're moving along, and all these issues, that we found that we had a new uh, uh, the architects left us our financial advisors they retired and changed the biggest issue for us was our state usda department had a complete turnover of personnel we had some retirements we had people that went to new jobs and so the people who were familiar with our project went away and we have to now bring the new people up to speed and usda has changed its process instead of doing a lot of stuff locally like they did in the state now the decisions have to be kicked up to washington where where the decisions are reached that just adds an extra level of complexity which i'm sure you all appreciate that just means it takes more and more stuff i have a checklist of things i have to send in so we can close on this project and it's grown to about 50 items so far a little letters for this and that and the other and we're getting it taken care of we're hoping to close the end of august of this this month if not, then soon thereafter, so we can break ground and get started, get this fall, get the foundations laid and start the construction before winter sets in. We're hoping that uh, we can move there. We've already authorized, we've already got a contractor. Uh, we've already authorized them to go ahead and purchase that equipment that they have a long lead time for. Uh, and hopefully we can get all this USDA stuff cleared up uh, by then so that we can go. But we're excited about it. We think that's gonna help us from a financial statement standpoint, we're okay as a hospital. We're doing all right. Uh, with all the assistance that we received, really helped us break even, helped us keep us at a point where we're, we're actually better off than what we would have been uh, under normal conditions. We were able to save some cash and, and put some stuff aside so we can help pay for some of this uh, project going forward. Uh, other than that, we've recruited new doctors. We've added a couple new surgeons, Dr. Jeffrey, some of you may know, general surgeon we've added in the last couple of years. Uh, nice young man, uh, I think is, is an asset to our community. We've added Dr. Arms, a general uh, an orthopedist that has added to our, our group. We have another orthopedist, Dr. McGinnis from Owensboro that's coming and uh, another general surgeon that comes from Owensboro as well. So we're adding to our group. In fact, our OR right now is so little that they're fighting for time on when they get in there. And so we're hoping that we can get this thing going soon so we can take advantage of the interest that people have in providing services in our facility. We've added primary care providers. Dr. Akers a couple years ago came, started. Uh, Dr. Rollet is a new family medicine physician. She'll be starting this September, next next month. Uh, she'll be in Beaver Dam at our Beaver Dam offices and we'll be uh, starting brand new practicing patients. We just uh, uh, working with uh, Susan Matthews, nurse practitioner at Beaver Dam. She's been independent all these years. She's now going to join Ohio County Healthcare, and we're going to beef up our, our behavioral health there. And she's going to take that. Her her primary care patients. We're going to move to Dr. Rollet and to other caregivers. See if we can take care of that further. So we've got new relationships with Owensboro Health. Uh, we cooperate. Uh, we've told them very clear we don't want to be taken over by them. We want to stay independent. We want decisions for Ohio County to happen in Ohio County. But with their new CEO, I think we've got an opportunity to build a new relationship with them. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions. I don't want to take too much of your time. Just let you know that the hospital's doing pretty well, and, and we're fortunate. Uh, we've been able to, to maintain employees. We now have 560 FTEs, 560 employees employed by the hospital. Uh, you know, over, uh, I've been here 35 years, so back then we had 100, we thought that was a lot. So we've been able to continue to grow and build and bring these services to the community. And uh, I think we've got a group that we should all be very proud of. We're not perfect yet, we still got some work to do, 
and we still got some services we need to add and we need to bring back and some other things and hopefully with time we'll be able to do some of that stuff so i'll be glad to answer any questions or I, I did see that stare on the added services because he hears from that from me every time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be I'll be entertaining something for the court as far as I've been seeing a number of documents from the bond council. Uh, it's, it was about five hundred something, five to six hundred some odd pages of, of, that were, that I'm working through. Um, I anticipate that I may ask this court to meet for a special call within the next either by the end of this week or the beginning of next week uh, considering that they may need to get it by the end of the month because we will have I, be, I believe that we're going to have one of those being an ordinance so we'll need two readings and so uh, I may be asking the court if we could have a special call you know within within seven to ten days uh, it's just a lot of documents to, to, to fight through here at one time and, and we just need to make sure that the county, and I don't anticipate there being any cost to the county, we just need to make sure that none of the documents may indicate that, and I doubt they will. Uh, USDA said that they preferred the bond to be issued in the name of Ohio County Healthcare and the Public Facilities Corporation. So the intent was to have both names on there. We were going to do it ourselves, but they preferred to have both. So the, the, there's going to have to be a new lease, you know, the Ohio County Hospital Corporation at least from the county for 50 years, the hospital and all its facilities. That needs to be a new lease for 35 years, which is the length of the payback on this, uh, on this bond. So that will be one of the things you'll have to deal with. The other one is just an authorization to go ahead and issue the bonds, and it's very clearly in there that we're responsible for it. That's our rent payment. Uh, to you for the facilities is we pay all the, the bond costs so we take care of that that's what we've done historically that's what we plan on continuing to do so that's those will be coming so and i'll forward on. that to you by email um uh, the lease is the one thing that you probably want to see more than anything and but i doubt it's anything that's going to cause concern based on the initial review but thank you all very much appreciate you. your time thank you thank you uh, a few weeks ago, to get on the get the ball on the road, we approved uh, authorization and we signed the papers on the uh, flex, which we have. But to now we've got the resolution itself, which every, all of you need to sign, or all of us need to sign. You have it, Miranda. I do. So moved. The motion to Larry Camp. Second. Second. Sam Smith. Um, when will we be getting that? Will we can use it money. well the, it's a process we got to this point which we've been calling about this forever ever uh, now the next thing is the contract and since the contract comes it goes back to the state and they give us the go ahead well, probably we won't get to use it this year yes this we will I, i'm i didn't answer your question because i can't tell exactly but i would hope within a very few weeks so just this on that the uh the resolution but it also says the agreement i see tender looks like an agreement the resolution's on the back i know but the but but they're all there is also the agreement yeah they have only approved, approved pre that was approved before for me to sign that okay all right it just i didn't know if there was any change or anything okay uh, where's the resolution that we all signed it started down that way so as we vote yeah all say aye all right hold like time motion carried I think I still got a little more of that task in here. But, mm -hmm. uh, I'm putting a, a, the name of Helen McCown to serve on the uh, on the uh, library board for a three-year term. Uh, that'll be a roll call vote. Small? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Uh, 
Yes, we're going to committee reports, and I'm first going to ask uh, the equipment uh, uh, committee to report. Nick is here, and uh, Joe Barnes is uh, sort of the chairman of that committee, so I'd like to, for him to uh, report on that, and I think you'll have a uh, motion to advertise for some Well, Like I said, Nick's here, so if you've got any questions, we can consult Nick on it, but we put together a uh, list of equipment that we're needing out there at the road department. Um, and while we had funds that we were going to be able to purchase, uh, one is rubber tire backhoe. And uh, what we want to do is we have the options to do it on state bid, but in the past we've seen that sometimes we can get our own bids at a, at a better price than what they've got on the state contract some of the things that the state asked for to be on their equipment is actually a little bit higher and we don't need them so we're going to put the advertise for bid for rubber tire backhoe and i'll second that motion and and second the, uh, you want to do them individually all good oh well, yeah probably do well that's however you want to do it we can just read them all out the other one is a uh chill Roto kill. It's an attachment that goes on the mini traco and it uh, allows us to be able to pull the ditch from sitting over in the side of the road and uh, it makes it more of a one man uh, being able to, especially out there in the rural areas, be able to do it one man. And it's actually, it pulls the bank, you know, you don't, you're not pulling the dirt up on the road and it's much more efficient coming down through there on production. So we want to we want to look at advertising for that, and then also a uh, 2,500 uh, pickup truck, and we we want to open the bid up. In the past we hadn't, but we want to see what the difference is going to be. We want to get bids on the gas 2,500 and a uh, diesel 2,500, and all specs can be picked up at the road department to. Uh, actually tell about all the uh, vehicles you know, like the 2500 the four door and there's some specs that we need on the snow plow package and everything that we've run into in the, over the years that would be more efficient if it was on there so all the specs for these three different pieces of equipment will be able to be obtained at the road department from the okay we do have the motion second so if there any questions or discussion are any questions for Nick or Joe? If not, I'll better say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The the motion uh, carries. Uh, Nick, you will need to get with Miranda, put them ads in the local paper. Plus, you'll call the vendors you want to bid on. As well. One other that was on the list that we don't okay. have to bid for was the salt spreader and it you know it's below the amount that we actually have to bid for plus we've got a provider we've been dealing with on them and we just want to stick with the same one sure so just in case you saw that on the list that's why we, we went that way on that was there anything else on we bring up about the equipment right now nick no not right at the moment. okay uh, i saw something about a salt dog on there and have we got enough dollars to animal shelter so. In, anything else for the command your committees? No, that's it. Any other committees? Any other committees meet? Uh, the jail committee is going to meet here next week. Uh, Miranda, which day was it? The Six. 19th? 19th, I believe it's the 19th. Uh, at 1. At 1 o'clock. 19th, 1 o'clock. 19th at 1 o'clock. And this is where the, uh, uh, they're going to actually deliver some of this study to us. Uh, so hopefully that ball up. So that is uh, August 19th. Huh? Yeah, at 1 o'clock. Keep that committee and remind him of it yeah. and make sure I don't run off that day too. But he's supposed to have some of the information that uh, that we've been requesting. Right. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, any other committee reports? Are we, are we going to be in touch with other judges as well? They no, be they'll here. be here. They'll be they here. will be here. Okay. Uh, the uh, another thing, Judge, we talked about the road committee is uh, we we are out there mowing. You know, we're trying to do our mowing this a little different this year. We did spring in the first year. We've been working on a lot of bank repairs and and road issues that was major due to the flooding and everything that we had to take care of that was uh, FEMA oriented for uh, yeah. for cost, you know, to get them done at a certain time. But we uh, got some staffing built back up uh, to be out there mowing. So we're, we're gonna do that round of mowing. And then the other thing that came up is uh, they've been doing an excellent job up there on the uh, Rough River Bank where the road had slid in. But there was a few issues that uh, been pointed out uh, on Rough River down there in the center town area in the bottoms, that's the outskirts. That might be the same kind of issue that we might need to see about FEMA looking into. It. Nick, would you make go get with Charlie and y'all go look at both of those yeah. issues? Both of those. <clears throat> one was on uh, uh, on Clifty Huff, and the other one's this one off the of horse mark. Yeah. And I, down there, I can meet y'all anytime y'all want to come down. So. Yeah, I looked at it a year or so ago, and we weren't able to get anything going with FEMA then. But since they're they've, uh, here already, maybe we can get a look at these. Well, they're about bad enough. But, uh, We've got to get a bid on a concrete structure. Uh, and that should be in by, your other bid should be here by tomorrow on that one. It should be by tomorrow. And we'd get that, to get, get that turned loose. And it's a pretty big form of concrete pour, and that's what was probably the holding up point at this time. Yeah, we got more than one bid next year. Yeah, this would be two. Is that something we need to act on tonight uh, by being over the amount of twenty thousand dollars? So we'll we probably ought to go ahead. Over two. I mean, this thing up. is going to need to move pretty quick because we're going as of Friday. Rough River is going to start releasing water. Yeah, and that if that releases much water, they'll shut us out. Yeah, that bottom <laughs> of that culvert. Is right even with the river as it is now, so yeah. uh, we we won't be able to act on unless we have the bids and we're opening on and right. those things where we okay we might need to guys just so we move us along further and I know we have to maybe with Justin to have another special call meeting but if we can uh, if we can do that so we can get we really along quick we, on we really think it'll be under the thirty the bid thing is that is. 30. Yeah, it's 30. Yeah, yeah. But, we think that, but we might have to do what Ken's saying as far as we may. Yeah. We may do that. And, and I see what Justin's saying. We really, you know, we don't have the bids in front of us. So. Well, we actually have, well, we don't have in front of us, but we already had one come in. One with 28,000 for labor, and, the, and the, that was with us by the company. When do you think you can get the other one, Nick? Uh, he was hoping, he thought he would have it to me today, but I didn't get it. Yeah. I, I know we're uh, covered up on this project here, but looking ahead, and uh, how far are we away from maybe start uh, patching chip and signal? Have any idea? Or can, have we got enough to, after we once get to the Rough River job done, to where we can uh, mow yeah. some and chip and seal some too? After tomorrow, I'm hoping that maybe next week we can try to start doing some chipping. Yeah. Uh, we've got to finish up tomorrow because Seamus want everything to go pretty. Uh, as soon as you get one part of it done, they want the next part done, pictures taken. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to have uh, several of them are trying to finish in site four and site, what we can is site three. Then all we like is the concrete culvert and finishing up right beside it. So I can reach, I can turn loose of some guys after we get that point. I'll tell you something that may help us if we just wanted to work around the Dundee area to start with. Because you know there's some damage on the on the uh, Dundee Narrows Road to start with. Yeah. And uh, but uh, just uh, I don't I, I guess the reason I was actually don't want to run out of time. You know what yeah, I mean? Right. When it gets cold for it. So yeah. okay. And there's a possibility that they won't pay for a chip and sell on that one. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to see. We're going to try. All right. If there are no other committee reports, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you my COVID report.
And uh, as, as you know, uh, I've said, and lots of folks are, uh, are backing me up on this, that the uh, key to us getting this virus behind us, by the way, it's worse now than it's ever been. We're in the, at the worst place right now than we've ever been with the virus. And uh, the only thing is the way we're dealing with it, we're not shutting the world down for it this time, but we've got to try to live with it and live through it. And the best thing we can do is encourage vaccinations. Uh, and, uh, and and the first thing we do goes just, uh, I'm gonna send out a list of facts to people and we're gonna actually advertise this in the paper and uh, to try, and uh, I'm gonna get, team up with the hospital on this. Oh, I got healthcare, I'm sorry. For 50 years of habit, it's hard to break. That's okay, um, we'll answer the both. Oh, I can health care and we're going to try to put out this message. There's no such thing as a hundred percent vaccine, that's one thing. However, the ones that are out there are highly I do have a high percentage in the nineties. Right now ninety one percent of all in our Green River area here, the health district, ninety one percent of everyone is getting the virus now are unvaccinated. And when I say, well, it's 91% effective of that, that's not exactly right. But the statement is that 91% of all new cases are unvaccinated people. And nationwide and statewide, I believe it's actually a little better than that. Uh, so, uh, but I'm sticking with uh, Green River Health that's saying 91%. Um, and one thing I do to is dispel rumors, and it's hard to do that. The harm comes from the vaccination. There's very little evidence that anyone was uh, ever harmed by it beyond being a sick a day or two. Uh, and I think one of the hospital employees was sick as long as maybe. No name there, no name with that. But that, uh, other than that, there's been no serious illness from that. No one's ever gotten COVID from getting the vaccination. That's never happened. And uh, we have no evidence that anyone in the Green River District, health, health district, has ever died from having the vaccination or had any serious illness from it. And that's in the entire uh, Green River District. But more will come. We're going to do some advertisement stuff to try to get that message out there and try to get the facts out, not just my opinion, but we're going to back up all of the facts. Uh, now we're down to magistrate's comments and requests. And Mr. Small, you're up first. Uh, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. There. There. Yeah. Justin. No, thank you, Judge. Anyone have anything for the good of the body? Uh, yes, I, I'd okay. like to speak if no one else. Come on. Uh, Come on, Dan. Uh, Judge, I talked to you uh, two weeks ago. I told you I couldn't make the meeting. We had a revival at church. And, yes. Uh, you told me that you thought some calls needed to be made, and you were going to see that they were made. Did, did anything come out of that? or? Uh, uh, just basically the calls were that, uh, yes, we're working on it. Hopefully we'll have you some answers soon. And I know you've been hearing that same thing for going on two years, but that's just the answer we get. Yeah, well, and, I- And we've had the same put-offs that you had. Yeah, I'm, I may have an answer to that a little bit, but I, I, so I called uh, uh, Raymond Hagen uh, yesterday and I just, Said Raymond, I said it's. I said July's gone again for this year, and he had pretty much told me July may be done by July. So that's why I said it, and I said the river's down. And he, uh, for me, he said, well, I never gave you no date. And I said, Raymond, that's not true. I said it's been July every year, and I said realistically it'll be October it gets done. But I said I'm, I'm not a liar. So anyway, uh, 
he said, well, he said, it really don't matter. He said, uh, I understand that it's approved in Atlanta on its way back to Ohio County. And I said, well, that's, that's great news, but I said, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, that's more up-to-date news than Charlie well, that, what he called that, that. And Along with that, so I tried to call Charlie Shields this morning. I tried to call Charlie Shields soon after I heard that to see if Charlie knew that. And uh, I didn't get him yesterday. I called him 11.30 this morning, and he said he was in a meeting. He could get back to me. I called him again at 3.30 today, and I told him what I heard from Raymond Hagan, and he said, well, he said, I can't verify that, but he said, I'll call tomorrow. So uh, I'm just trying to I appreciate everything you guys have done, and I hope we get this thing done. And I also I talked to uh, Larry about uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Narrows Road, and I also talked to Charlie, and I understand that's going good. So It is. So that's great, but I understand the difference in the two, but it does seem like uh, FEMA's got well, some money, so hopefully yeah. uh, they, they it's, uh, like I say, the river is way down, and the jam is way up, yeah. and ugly as ever. Yeah, when it's on a road right away, it makes it entirely uh, well. Thank, thank you very much, and I, maybe I have some good news here. I hope so. That sounds great. Uh, anyone else got anything? They don't. This meeting stands adjourned.